So here to share her knowledge on surrogacy and all that it entails is Dr. Marjorie Dixon, along with Danielle Tunbridge, who has been a surrogate. It is so good to see you both. Come on in and have a seat. Uh, welcome. Dr. Dixon, I want to start with you. So many questions. I want to know, how do you know if you're in a situation where you need a surrogate or an egg donor? Okay. So, firstly, a surrogate. The patients that come to me for surrogacy sometimes know ahead of time. So it'll be a patient who not, might not have a uterus. Some mm -hmm. people are born without uteruses. Or has had cancer and the uterus was removed. Yeah. Or if you're a single man or gay dads mm -hmm. or planning a family, so you know that you need a surrogate. Um, some of the time it's because you have a medical condition that precludes you from carrying a pregnancy. It wouldn't be safe if you have a heart problem that might risk death if you were to be pregnant. So those kinds of people come. And then also sometimes it's infertility patients that have been with me for a while who have gone through the gamut of a long journey and are now looking to surrogacy and or egg donation. And to be clear, there are two types of surrogates. Okay. So there are gestational surrogates, which, you know, you imagine the stork. The stork arrives with the baby. That's your uterus is the stork. That's a gestational surrogate. So the eggs and the sperm that created the baby are separate, not genetically related to the person who's carrying the pregnancy. Gestational right. surrogacy. Traditional surrogacy is where the eggs that made part of the baby actually are um, the same person as the person carrying the baby. Mm -hmm. In the old days, there was more traditional surrogacy, but now with the advent of IVF and that we're able to get intended parents actually their own genetic material easily into somebody else, gestational surrogacy is mostly what I see. And then egg donation, people require egg donation. As women get older, we've talked about this before. As we get older, our egg quality decreases. So as I'm seeing patients who have done uh, travel, bought houses, and met their partners later in life, sometimes their eggs no longer are working. So they require the services of an egg donor. And then sometimes people use an egg donor and a gestational surrogate to get pregnant. Got it, lots of options there. So mm -hmm. is surrogacy legal in Canada? Absolutely. So it's that's, legal. It's probably the number one myth. So mm -hmm. it's 100% legal. Mm -hmm. um, it, so you can not pay an egg donor or a gestational surrogate, but you can reimburse for costs that are directly and indirectly related to the cycle. So healthy foods, time lost from work, clothing, um, expenses. So you can't pay someone, but they're, um, it's actually regulated, legislated by something called the Assisted Human Reproduction Act. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's federally mandated, so across the country. And then also Health Canada is the person that enforces it. So Health Canada actually follows these regulations that are called Safety of Sperm and Ova in Canada. And there are only certain facilities in Canada, fertility centers. So not all fertility centers do this. So you need to go to a center that knows all of the things legally, um, medically, and just for safety of all the parties involved. It's good that it's regulated. You want to know that it's regulated, right? So that everything goes smoothly. There's a contract in place. There are rules. There's legislation. Yeah. That's a good thing. So I'm wondering, do a lot of people come to Canada to have their families via surrogate or, or via an egg donor? Like, are we a spot for that? Yeah, actually, yes. We are. We are. Because of the fact that Canada is progressive, mm -hmm. there are places where the laws are very extremely restrictive for uh, intended parents through gestational surrogacy, and sometimes it's just frankly illegal. Right. So patients come to Canada for that. Also in Canada, um, it doesn't discriminate. So if you, it doesn't matter your marital status or your sexual orientation, mm -hmm. you can access the services of a gestational surrogate. There are some places where you can do gestational surrogacy in the world, but you can't access if you're not married or oh. if you're part of the LGBTQ community. So mm -hmm. the, that's why Canada is preferred. Um, the Ukraine for, was a hot spot for gestational surrogacy the, during this whole uh, circumstance. There were stories about babies that were born in, in facilities there. So now people are moving to other options and they want to go somewhere where it's regulated and mandated and where there are professionals who know how to manage these circumstances. Yeah. And the U.S. is, is a little bit of um, a different environment because you can pay an egg donor or a gestational surrogate. When I was a fellow in the States, they approached me to become an egg donor and were going to pay me a significant amount of money, for example, hmm. when I was training. So you can't do that in Canada, mm -hmm. and plus the Canadian dollar is lower, so um, it's less expensive. And with the checks and balances, as I said, the legislation, the regulation, the centers that are managed, it's an attractive place for not just domestic people who are locally through Canada to do it, but also internationally. It sounds like an altruistic endeavor, Danielle. That's what it sounds like, because you can't get paid for it. No.
Um, and so I'm just wondering what motivated you to become a surrogate? So I'm a mom of two myself, mm -hmm. and that first feeling when you hold your baby for the first time is um, undeniably probably the best feeling in the world. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted to give that to someone who simply can't for whatever reason, whether they were you know in a gay relationship and they physically cannot do it, or you know maybe even just a couple that struggles with fertility. Mm -hmm. I've had a lot of friends that have struggled with fertility throughout the years, mm -hmm. and you know watching their heartache. I mean, I've had two kids. I've never had a miscarriage. Mm -hmm. um, I, have, I carry well, mm -hmm. um, and I enjoy being pregnant. So it just seemed like something that I could do that would be minor, but really give back to someone who, who really wants it. You sound like an empath. And I'm just <laughs> wondering then, when you have the experience of growing a human, it's mm -hmm. quite a thing, right? So at the end of that, um, when you have to part with the baby, how, like, how does that feel? Is it... Do you just feel like, well, this is great. I've got my kids, now you got yours. It does, yeah. Um, you know, you don't really know going into surrogacy the first time around, at least, if you'll have that maternal yeah. um, connection. Mm -hmm. But I very much, um, yeah, it was, I was, it was harder for me to say goodbye to the parents than it was the baby. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so tell me a little bit about your journey as a surrogate. What kind of relationship did you have with the parents? How did that whole thing work? So I didn't know them. They were okay. strangers. Yeah. And we matched um, together um, through an agency. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we kind of developed a relationship um, just over the process of going through all the hoops that you have to jump through, mm -hmm. just the medical and everything. Mm -hmm. And then um, we did a, our first transfer, transfer with Dr. Dixon, and it unfortunately it failed. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, there was a little bit of a strain on our relationship at that point just because all parties were devastated, myself included. Um, you know, my husband and I get pregnant very easily, so we were very fortunate. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, and then I got pregnant in May 2021, at the end of May, and um, we, you know, we utilized um, our technology as, as best we could mm -hmm. because they live in, um, in the States. They certainly, with COVID as well, it put like an extra layer to everything because they wanted yeah. to be here for doctor's appointments, ultrasounds, and they weren't mm -hmm. able to do that. Right. So we met at Thanksgiving face to face for the first time when I was pregnant, and that was really special. Um, we got together with our with my family. It was really really nice. They felt the baby kick and everything. Oh my gosh. And then uh, they came for the delivery. Yeah. So I'd only actually seen them in person twice, mm -hmm. um, but it it was. I mean, overall. It, there, I have no regrets. I think it's a really beautiful thing to be able to connect with someone on that level. Yeah. And with everything that's going on in the world, I just think a little bit more kindness can go such a long way. Mm -hmm. that, I mean, that is beyond kindness. <laughs> because I asked you about what it's like to part with the baby, but what is it like to see their joy oh, when you've given them undenied. this gift yes. that they could not have without you? Mm -hmm. How does that feel? Um, I, my heart grows like mm -hmm. 10 times every time they send me a picture of the baby. Super cute. Yeah, or just seeing the mom. I was at a meditation retreat a while ago and you had to picture like your, your most happiest moment that had happened recently. Uh -huh. And the day I said goodbye to the mom and, or the parents and the baby, um, mm -hmm. she was, the mom was holding the baby like this face to face and they were both just smiling. And I have that Aww. like ingrained in my brain forever. Okay, so here's the other thing. Do you stay? Do you do you stay uh, in a relationship with them, or it's sort of like you know this big gift mm -hmm. is done and we're both moving so on you with kind our of, lives? You kind of set your intention before you go into it, just yeah. what both parties are looking for, because some people do want you know a long-lasting relationship. This mm -hmm. is the start of like an extended family. Whereas I didn't feel that way. I just said to them, you know, let's just see what happens. Mm -hmm. Like I'd like to be updated once a year just to see how she's doing. Yeah. You know, she could be the next. You know, Prime Minister, I don't know. Right. <laughs> Supreme Court Justice. Yeah. Right. You want to be able to say, yes. so I am connected to that yes. person. Yes. <laughs> that is incredible. Thank you both for joining us today. It was so good to talk to you about this. It's a great conversation. Give us all the feedback because there are a lot of people that want to know about all the details mm -hmm. of what you do. And thank you for your work. It's incredible.